When planning the layout of your pergola, there are three important factors to consider. The first is the outside to outside dimensions of your post, both the depth of the pergola and the width. The second is the desired height from the ground to the top of your beam. And the third is the direction in which you want the purlins, the shade portion of the pergola, to tilt. So for that, you're gonna to wanna to consider where the sun is coming from your particular outdoor space and what time of day you wanna use the pergola. So when it comes to the layout of the pergola, the next step, I'll direct you to here to our CAD drawings. All of our pergola kits come with a CAD drawing that denotes the width, the depth, the recommended heights. We'll have even on there the rafter spacing. If you do not want these exact width and depths, that's not a problem. Every single kit is trimmable for both width and depth. If you'd like to trim the width of the pergola, it's very simple. That's this outside box beam here, the outside box beam here, and each one of the purlins. If you'd like to trim the depth of the pergola, there's one more thing to consider, and that is that the purlin holders have holes in them spaced at whatever increment you choose based upon your shade level. So I've got one of them here to illustrate. Here is an inside purlin holder. And you notice we put stickers on them here. Don't cut this end. Do cut this end. And when you're determining the depth that you want to that you want to change your pergola to, you know, say for example, you wanted to take seven inches off of this kit. Well, seven inches doesn't work very well because it puts your cut right in the middle of the hole. So when you're all done with your pergola, you'll have half a hole showing. So a better dimension here would be to put it right in between a hole. So here you got nine inches, and that's gonna work out a lot better when you're all done. You won't see any um, half holes on your pergolas. So trimming the pergolas is very simple. You don't need any special tools aside from a battery operated circular saw, a non-ferrous carbide tooth blade, and a little bit of patience and practice. So let's get started with the trimming. Okay, now I've got my eyes and my ears on. Let's start with the two by eight box beam. This piece has aluminum inside of it. You wanna slide that aluminum and make sure that it's flush with the end of the vinyl piece. You'll measure and mark with a pencil and a speed square. And you're gonna to wanna to make your cut with your saw carefully and slowly. All the way through that vinyl and aluminum in one shot. Don't worry too much about the edges, those will get covered up later. Now if you do happen to make a mark on the vinyl when you're going about it, all of our kits come with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. You can lick your thumb and just take those little scuff marks from the saw right out. Next piece we have is the purlin holder. Now notice I've got my mark on the cut end of the holder. Now there's no aluminum in this one, so you can go a little faster, but you still wanna make sure you cut nice and slow. Measure, mark, and cut. Next we'll move to our vinyl post sleeve. <clears throat> Same step, measure and marking with the speed square on all four sides of the post, making sure all those marks line up. If you're gonna be careful with any cut on the pergola, this is the one to be careful with because this cut will show at the bottom of the pergola. You 
go ahead and roll the post and trace that cut all the way around with your saw. The last item to demonstrate is our aluminum post mount. Same drill, measure, mark with your speed square all four sides of the post. Hold up your saw and very carefully and slowly Cut that aluminum all four sides of the post. Now, if you're like me and it's hard to get a perfect cut on this step, don't worry too much about that. The vinyl post sleeve, once it goes over this tube, is gonna cover up that cut. So, on to the next step. Yeah.